This month we discuss comprehension, com comprehending, comprehending. It's not comprehending, it's comprehension and comprehending. Comprehending things, fully understanding. So you can get some things and understanding why it is. This morning we think of why the love of Christ. What about the love of Christ? What is it? What does it matter? Why is it a big deal? And we start with understanding, or, or we start with the passage from our um, annual theme of being filled. And a portion of that is, it, of this prayer is to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge. See, this is a great portion of Scripture. This is a great sentiment because the preacher can say, do you understand the love of Christ? You say, yes. I say, no, you don't. Scripture says you don't. You don't fully understand. It says it surpasses. There's more to it. So whether it is that you've not been baptized into Christ or whether it is that you've not ever studied uh, about who Jesus is or what the Christ is or whether you have known for many years and you have led people in the fight and you are a strong soldier of the Christ there's more and there's extra there is love that surpasses knowledge there is something about that name that is more than we can understand or more than we can comprehend what does it say that Christ that Jesus loves you more than you know. When you hold your child or when you held your child or when you look at a mother holding a child or, or a father, there is no understanding that that child can have. There's no way that that baby can figure out how much mama loves them. They just don't know. They won't know. Even when they have a child of their own, they won't know just how deep that love is. They won't know. That's probably the, the closest that they can get to it. Yet we will not die for anyone's sins. We will not. We are not God. So we cannot fully turn that like a, like a parent and a child could. And yet one of the most common and most understood verses in the entire world, one of the things that gets repeated and, and so many times out of context is that, well, God loves the world and because he loves the people here, because he loves his, his created, he sent his son to be our savior, to be a propitiation for our sins. So God loves us and this love is... Uh, him loving us first is why we would love him. Well, that's absolutely true. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. We will be more like him. We can be more like him because of his love for us. We can be more godlike. Well, that's. That's terrific. We look mainly this morning at Romans chapter 5. The first portion of Romans chapter 5. For while we were still weak at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. There is no way to understand fully that Jesus was in heaven. That the Godhead 3 decided that he would take on flesh. That he would live 33-ish years here on this earth and that he would die for all of those who have been created ever. How many billions of people have ever been? I'm not sure exactly what the count is right now on the world count. It's uh, a lot. How many billions or trillions or however many people, how many people have ever been? Ever. I don't know the number. You think the number's hard to come up with? Try knowing every single one of their names. And Christ died for the ungodly. For everyone ever. And he leaves heaven. 
the thing that we're trying so hard to get to. In Isaiah chapter 49, 2 Corinthians chapter 6 quotes from Isaiah chapter 49, starting in verse 8, thus says the Lord, In the time of favor I have answered you, in a day of salvation I have helped you. I will give you and keep, uh, I will keep you and give you as a covenant to the people to establish a land uh, to apportion the desolate heritages. Saying to the prisoners, come out to those who are in darkness, appear. They shall feed along the ways. All the heights, all the bare heights shall be their pasture. They shall not hunger nor, th hunger or thirst. Neither scorching wind nor sun shall strike them. He who has pity on them will lead them. And by springs of water will guide them. Pity is taken on us. Pity is taken on those who are separate. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely will, uh, for one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. It's a difficult thing. It's a difficult thing to die for anyone that you would one person would lay down their life for another. Or even for a group of people. And how many movies is it uh, posted in or posed in that the the hero would sacrifice themselves for the group of the people or for the for someone else? It's not an easy thing to say, yeah, I will lay down my life and to know exactly the torture that will be gone through is a difficult thing. So, even after he has entered into his physical life and he's come down here on earth because he knows how many people by name that he will be saving, still so difficult a thing is it that in the garden he prays, take this away. No, I, I really don't want to have to go through this. Father, if you're willing, remove this cup from me. And yet he does not, even though he could call 10,000 angels. He continues. And so Christ died for us. He rises from his prayers. His betrayer meets him and he is carried off. The life is laid down. He is given for us. And it's not just that this lamb fought back. It's not just that this lamb was given. It's the manner in which he was given, willingly going. And yet, even as he willingly goes to death, man still finds opportunity to poke at it. In the garden, they come and they seize him. It's not just that they say, come with me, and that he goes willingly, because he's going to go willingly. How many scenes in what movie have you got to watch where he says, don't put your hands on me. I'll go with you, but don't put your hands on me. No, he, he is subjected to all of the torture. They seize him, they let him away, take him where he does not want to go. While that's happening, he is rejected by his friends. This lamb that was given for us because of his love for Peter. Here, Peter denies him. Because of his love for man, he continues to go through this. And each of his friends leave his side. He's mocked. Smacked around. And held without his friends. And then it's not just that his friends would reject him. It's that the people who knew he was coming, those Jews that should have been looking, that looked through all this Old Testament for the day of salvation, like Isaiah had written to them, and they should have known, they reject him. We've heard it from his own lips, but we don't understand it. They didn't understand it if they could have got it then they would know that he will be the Christ, and yet they cannot fathom it. 
Then they're reje he's rejected by the government. His last plea, those who were put into power to keep sanity on the earth. And he is rejected by all. In his rejection and in his condemnation on the earth, there is mocking on top of that that the one that would be chosen to be let go would be someone just like them. Man seeks his own. Barabbas, a murderer, is let go. Man seeks his own. They don't look to salvation. They don't look to God. They don't look to Christ. And so they continue to mock him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, twisting together a crown of thorns. They put it on his head and put a reed in his right hand and kneeling before him they mocked him saying hail king of the Jews and they spit on him and took the reed and struck him on the head in his love for man the king of glory allows himself to be set up a mock king with a trash scepter a fake crown meant to continue to hurt him and then truly his subjects kneel before him and mock him to his face as he stands there truly their king and they do not see it and they do not understand it and then they put him up on the cross nail him to it and as he dies they continue to poke at him to poke fun at him to ride him and wagging their heads you who would destroy the temple in three days save yourself and come down from the cross he saved others he cannot save himself let the Christ the king of Israel come down from the cross that we may see and believe and they continue and revile him and he subjects himself to this your king subjects himself to this and then in a last peaceful moment he finally allows himself to die thank God that he finally was able to die and give up being seized and rejected and rejected and rejected and mocked and hurt and beat and rejected and hurt and mocked and rejected the peaceful moment that he could finally die. So how do we understand the love that God has for us? How do we fully understand leaving that place we're trying so hard to get to? To come and find a moment of peace in death. Since therefore we've now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. It's not just that he saves, it's that he saves. He did all of this because he loves us. And in going through those actions, you would imagine that someone would change their mind. You would imagine that someone would say, you know what, y'all, you're not worth it. You would imagine that at some point you would have to count the cost-benefit analysis of just exactly how many billions of people need to have salvation offered to them. And yet he's faithful that as he rises from the grave and, and sits with authority, in authority with his father, he stands there pouring out his blood for the salvation of many. We're reconciled to God by the death of His Son. We enter into death like His. It's not just the death of His Son, it's also His life. And it's not just that He died and was raised that we could have salvation. It's that we have entered into death like His. So that we could be raised with Him. Be raised like He was raised. 
Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We have been, we, have, we were buried, therefore, with him in baptism into death in order that as just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too may walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Are you following along? Look at Romans chapter 5 real quick. Because I did not make a slide for this. I wanted you to see this on your piece of paper. Romans chapter 5. The scriptures we've been looking at starts in that 6th verse. For while we were still weak at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person. Though perhaps for a good person one would, even, uh, one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us. And that while we were still sinners Christ died for us. How many times do you want to read this and say, we are righteous, we've been made righteous by God, that we've been made for the righteousness of God? Remember, that was one of the first scriptures that I had in this sermon, that we raised righteous. But that's not who we died. While we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely will one die for a righteous person. That's not you. For a good person, one would even dare to die. That's not you either. But God shows his love for us, for you. And that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You are the enemy you are the unworthy you're not the good you're not the righteous Christ died for you the enemy the wagging head the bowing before him oh our God that's the love of the Christ that while I was that he died for me. Verse 11. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom we have been through whom we have now received reconciliation because of that we rejoice because he counted me worthy that while I would bow and mock that while I would spit while I would reject he counted me worthy and in that I rejoice. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That he would count me worthy enough. To love me that much. And as close as we could get to understanding. That. It's still love that surpasses knowledge. It's still more than that. It's still deeper than that. That he loves us that much more. Than that. Go ahead and open your songbooks if you would. How do you fully understand all the things that God has done for us? How do you fully understand the love that God has given to us? You can't, and that's okay too. Whether you can fully understand the death or the, the manner of mind that he might have had a portion of, we can't fully understand, we can't fully comprehend, we, don't under, we, we just can't. But we can rejoice in knowing that we have been raised in newness of life to walk with him. If you haven't, then that rejoicing, that love is still offered there for you. Would, why would you not take him up on that?